Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Komi Can't Communicate Season 2 Episode Number 7. Okay, the previous episode, it was New Year's and uh, we saw Tadano and you know Najimi and everyone uh, call all the other friends and uh, invite Komi as well to go to the shrine, you know the first shrine visit and uh, we saw how like, you know, Tadano was kind of hesitating to call Komi but by the end of it you know like Najimi calls her and invites her and he was on her way back because she was in the grandmother's house and then everyone kind of met and uh, yeah they went to the shrine while um, that was the first part the second part was something where which was involved like you know where Katai was involved Katai, uh, Tadano and Komi the three of them went ice skating and Katai was like you know really looking forward to make friends and be better friends with Tadano while at the same time he was thinking oh Komi was here because he wanted to uh, she wanted to encourage me to become better friends with Tadano you know his own misunderstanding he thinks Komi is the communication master <laughs> so it was kind of nice to see like you know Tadano and like you know Katai and Komi as well like you know kind of hanging around and uh, Tadano was pretty good at ice skating he taught Katai and Komi both of them to ice skate properly it was a nice uh, like, you know thing and uh, yeah it was it was a very good section In the final part of the previous uh, episode we get to see Ka uh, uh, Tadano being sick at home and uh, you know he he tried to call Najimi to help him out because he was unable to do anything and his parents were not at home neither was his uh, like you know sister so he mistakenly called Komi and Komi came in and Komi did everything you know like kind of cooked for him and like took care of him all that and uh, yeah that was a very wholesome section Najimi was late unfortunately I don't know what the hell she was doing but yeah she was late and <laughs> thank god Komi came in time so that was that and uh, yeah it was it, it was uh, like you know it was nice to see like you know Komi and Tadano actually what can I say like you know um actually like you know this is like a one by one interaction which is kind of nice usually we get to see komi and tadano interact and all of their friends are present so it was kind of nice to see them like you know together alone and just you know like spending a peaceful time even though tadano was not like you know in an appropriate uh, like you know state he was sick but still you know like i guess kind of like you know a, a development a positive development uh, in their relationship so yeah let's see what this episode brings this is episode number seven. Oh, um we got a special preview for the um supposed main character the self-proclaimed main character of this series nasi shisto i think that was his name so <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing he's going to come in this episode let's see uh this is episode seven let's start i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three Two, one, go. Previously, oh yeah, yeah, there you go. Oh yeah, this happened. <laughs> Intrude rudely. Will think. The narrator. Oh no. Last day of winter vacation. Trying to calm down. A misunderstanding. Okay. Is she like writing a letter to Tadano or something? Okay, did Najimi really see that? I don't think so. It's not like this. There you go. He's still writing a letter. <laughs> Yo, it's good. Wow. Why? <laughs> it's not even his mom or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> what? First place? Yeah, there you go. Like, everyone does that. Not everyone, but most people. Um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh no, I, I wonder how. Like, Tadano doesn't know what happened. Later, she spent writing. What the? Oh no. Oh my god, people are going to misunderstand. Oh god. Oh, hello. Wow. Ah! Yeah, he should. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, he has no clue what happened. I think. <laughs> okay. I was just checking pulse. <laughs> checking pulse? Okay. Hallucination. I wonder what Tadano... Like, does Tadano remember? I doubt he remembers everything, but... Maybe bits and pieces? Oh my god, he doesn't even realize that Fumi was here. Wow. Hallucination. Hmm. Oh. Oh no. Yeah, that would be a little bit weird, but but in this case, he was here. So his sister realized that someone was here. So Yeah. Yeah, okay. There we go. That that'll be good. <laughs> you he's sweating. <laughs> How's your code? There you go. Yeah, but Yeah, true. <laughs> okay, now go and ask Najimi first. Phone call under parenthesis. Oh no, this is a huge misunderstanding. His hand. Ah! Oh my god. Okay, ask her. Please. Oh no. It's a weird way to answer. Especially since Tadano doesn't realize what happened. <laughs> Tadano awake. Ah, here we go, narcissist. Oh, oh, really? Okay. Oh, I did not know that. Oh, interesting. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, how beautiful I am. Look at me. Like, 
I'm this beautiful, I never realized. Nadu Sekun, okay. Nadu <laughs> Sekishko. Kometani Chushaku. Chushaku, oh, that's why. <laughs> Just okay. <laughs> Banging chair. Oh, so he's like the co. <laughs> so he kind of adds co commentary. <laughs> oh my god, this guy. No one's looking at him. That's sad. Oh, Tata was looking. This <laughs> is music. <laughs> Should I get his... His answer. <laughs> oh. His point of view. <laughs> well, she hasn't spoken to anyone, technically. Oh, really? Okay, he, he, he nailed it. Oh my god. <coughs> wow. Yeah, a little fan service, you know? <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Oh my god. <laughs> the music resumes. Oh my god. What's happening? Oh, since it's Komi, okay. No, wait, what's happening? What are they doing? Oh my god, this guy. <laughs> He's falling. He's like, oh, because I'm so beautiful. Oh no, never mind. Wow. <laughs> Metal reset. Yo, Tadano is transparent. What the hell? That's how he sees Tadano? <laughs> oh my god. No, that's not your fan. He's like, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> it's all coming out of talk for yourself it's coming for, getting into one ear and it's going out of another one I saw that nothing registered in his head I think he'll be like oh I'm s no it registered okay Wow. What the? Yo, she has like her own personal bodyguard. <laughs> what is this? Guren Lagan? Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> oh, she, he's kind of okay. He's a little bit has social anxiety as well, I think. Oh, that's kind of interesting. He always follows him around. <laughs> okay, he's going she's going to return his handkerchief. There you go. He's like, ah, oh, my time has come. Finally. <laughs> oh. It's like, I'm not going to watch this ever again. 
<laughs> I'm sure he's thinking something like that. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, here he is. <laughs> Where's Komi's personal bodyguard squad? Where are they? Exchange for oh. Um, what's happening? What happened? Oh. Okay, okay. Ah. Uh, okay. <laughs> got a new friend <laughs> oh no wow okay <laughs> school trip okay mm, yeah after school <laughs> okay. Nice. Yeah, wherever you go with friends, yeah, exactly. With friends. Old buildings and stuff, okay. <laughs> um, are you listening? Hello? She's spacing out. Uh, she was spacing out. Why is she asleep? <laughs> Game center. <laughs> Ginka, okay, Ginka Kuchi, okay. All right, Najim, stop his snoring. Oh my God. <laughs> What's bothering her? Hmm. So oh. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> Whoa. Hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Okay. Well, this is awkward. Yeah, he, like he's been acting weird from the Yeah. Hmm. He's been distracted, so... Yeah. Okay. Hmm. 
Wait, why is she? She, she's going to stop him. Oh no, she's calling him. <laughs> okay so oh wait then why what Okay, this is a big group. Oh, my God. So I'm guessing she probably skipped school that day or something because no one was The losing oh my god wow what No, I I would guess it would be the reverse but like you know people were all wanting Komi in their group that's why maybe they were like uh, like i wouldn't f i don't find a reason why they would uh, i ended up not going on the trip yeah so she skipped the school on that day I would guess it was the reverse, you know, like people were like, oh, Komi is, we want Komi in our group. Ah, <clears throat> uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Wait, what? Gender unknown. Wait, so where where is she? No, but Yamai and You know, that's not what she means. <laughs> that's bold of you, Tala, no? <laughs> that was... <laughs> oh, Lord. Is she speaking directly? No. Did something drop from her hand? Hmm. <laughs> Okay. Ah! Well, there you go. Hm. 
Oh no, what? Okay, the teacher knew that this was going to happen. <laughs> School trip arc. Wow, alright. <clears throat> alright, this was an interesting episode. First, the whole thing with Naruse and then... And then the whole school trip thing. Oh, that guy. Uh, what's his name? I forgot. It was something with C. Who is always with Naruse? that it yep all right this was i have to say this was a very interesting episode because the first the final part was really like you know interesting that whole thing i'll talk about it and uh, obviously we get to see naruse and uh, yeah the whole misunderstanding of komi and tadano okay <clears throat> so first we begin with komi being embarrassed she's like what am i supposed to do now like you know najimi saw me so what should I say? <laughs> like that was like how to express that that was a misunderstanding. I I was just you know like just normally like a like a, like you know like a sh show of friendship. I was just holding his hand. So <laughs> she starts writing a letter to Najimi as if Najimi is his, <laughs> his Tadano's mom or like something like that. <laughs> Like oh this is this is a full misunderstanding you know like nothing nothing like that sort of thing happened I I just you know like I I was uh, just as friends I was like not like you know, touching his hand and then she's like why am I even making excuses like it it would be even weirder if I make excuses so Najim is going to pick up on that so <clears throat> he's very confused as to what to do. Then she, there was a moment where she thinks that, is it even a big deal, like holding hands? But then she realizes that, yeah, for other person it might not be, but for me it is. So, <laughs> you know, it's a mess. And then by the end, he, she decides to actually write a letter to Najimi and explaining the whole situation. Um, she takes the letter, goes to Najimi's <laughs> shoebox. And uh, yeah, in the morning, she decides to put it in. Najimi appears in a very mm, perfect timing and uh, <laughs> Najim is like oh love letter from Komi grabs it and runs away and Tadan also comes in Tadan was like uh, like in a good morning and Komi is very embarrassed to talk to Tadano and she always is just trying to keep his her face away and Najimi sees the letter and it was written I was trying to measure his pulse that was that was all that was written so <laughs> now interestingly in the next scene we get to see everything from Tadano's perspective I did think this might happen I did think that Tadano will probably not remember anything because she he was very sick and in the middle of a fever most of the time everything is in a daze and you don't understand what's happening when you wake up the next day. So, but I don't know, I, I felt like maybe there was a chance of him remembering at least the fact that Komi came in. But he didn't even realize that. Like, he, he thinks that, oh, maybe because I called, mistakenly called Komi. That was probably why I was like, you know, in a daze and maybe I saw a hallucination. So, he was not sure. And he, like, obviously he's like, okay, if I ask Komi about this and she was actually not here 
that would be weird and kind of creepy wouldn't it like you know like in my in my fever i'm seeing hallucinations of komi so he's like what should i do <laughs> he's like i should ask najimi first because najimi was here definitely he's, he's sure about that um <clears throat> off he goes to the school and he comes in front of komi before najimi and he's like oh my god like this is awkward if i don't like you know greet her it'll be weird he greets her and he's not able to gauge the whole reaction he doesn't understand what komi is thinking and since komi was like you know embarrassed and looking away from him he's thinking like oh my god did something happen like what's happening why is she not looking at me and <laughs> then she, then he's like oh, wait a minute he, she's staring at me what's happening so he doesn't understand he he tries to make up what's happening when and then komi asks how is your cold and he's like but she knew about the cold because i called her and it's a mess he doesn't know how to react then he <laughs> oh my god then the whole misunderstanding where <clears throat> tadan was like okay after that what did you do after that means phone he was asking that after i called you what were you doing but or what were like you know what did you do after that and uh, komi thinks like after that he means like holding his hand and komi got like you know komi's like wait how did she know he know did, was he awake then and he just she just runs away while all on the other hand when tadan is extremely confused when tadan asks najimi like what happened like what was komi <clears throat> I cannot doing like did komi come and najimi is like oh he was taking your she was taking your pulse <laughs> that was a huge misunderstanding oh my god now <laughs> the next part <clears throat> nanushe shisto i think that was his name and uh, in the beginning it starts with the story from greek mythology narcissus uh a person who was in love with his own reflection that's from that's where narcissist comes to like you know like it's like a term where a person likes himself or is like you know obsessed with himself something like that so <clears throat> like i was not aware of this this whole like you know back, background of the word where it came from that's interesting so uh we begin with naruse so i think that was naruse shishuto or naruse shisto <laughs> i'm gonna call him naruse and he he's just standing in front of the window pane and he's like oh look at me who is this handsome person it's me <laughs> now i'll be honest when i saw the trailer and you know like when i saw that oh this is like you know a person who is going to come from the future season i was like okay maybe he will be that type of person you know who would consider himself to be like you know one of the people from the you know like you know what can i say like you know one of the better people from the others and he'll be very prideful very you know kind of kind of has a will have a bad character Know, like maybe he he'll be like that type of a character where he'll be like oh only komi is worthy enough to talk to me everyone else you're common rabble you know like you're all worms i thought that he, that would be her his personality surprisingly that's not his personality he does have that kind of a thing but that's just within his head and in in reality he's just an awkward mess and uh, it's like you know, I'm, i'm kind of glad that his personality is like this because yeah like i i've seen a lot of people like this in anime you know it's just that that type of a person who's just like oh i'm better than you that type of a character like ah that that would be kind of bad so i'm kind of glad it went in this direction like everything that's happening he's thinking in his head and now another thing we should realize from his behavior is that even though he is prideful about himself is kind of a narcissist even though that is the case he is not disrespectful towards the other people 
Like, you know, I have not, like, you know, this episode, he's, he has been introduced. In this episode, I have not seen him ever disrespecting or looking down on anyone else, which is something that I'm really appreciative of because he can be prideful. I don't care. But if someone, like, you know, looks down on others and, like, you know, tries to disrespect others just because of their overly inflated pride and ego, that's bad. And that's a bad narcissist. He, on the other hand, is a narcissist, but at the same time, he doesn't disrespect others or doesn't look at others in a demeaning way, which is very nice. I like that, you know, and I'm glad he's like this. So, you know, like, so that his, his character is, will be more enjoyable. Like, and I, I was ready to actually not like him from the trailer, but I'm pleasantly surprised in this episode where he has been introduced. I'm pleasantly surprised to see that even though he's a narcissist, he doesn't look down on others, which is a really good thing. And, uh, you know, he, like, you know, like, not only looking down on others, he himself is awkward as hell. Like, it's just, everyone just bumps into him and just, <laughs> and he just, he just cannot do anything. Like, there was like a few people looking at him and he's like, oh my god, <laughs> kind of tries to move away. Like, that's, that's kind of nice. You know, like, I'm, I'm glad I, 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 like, you know, he's not one of those has, does not have the, one of those bad personality and uh, yeah he's just an awkward guy that's that's just it an awkward guy with um uh, who, who likes himself who like who likes looking at himself in the mirror that's just him <laughs> and uh, yeah like looking at it in this way i've not seen any character in coming can communicate who is actually has a bad personality no one you know like like if you think of it in that way I, you, I guess you could say that yamai is kind of like that in a way you know but but that was like that's her whole character personality like you know her character trope or her character archetype you know being a yandri so i don't think you should actually actively like you know like hate someone or not like someone like i've seen a lot of people hate on yamai but I'm like, oh, that's just a character trait, you know, like nothing you can do about it because he's a, she's a Yandri and I've seen a lot of Yandris and Yamai is nowhere near one of those crazy Yandris. Crazy Yandris are just crazy. They can kill you. you know? That's that's the length that they can, should go. So in that way, Yamai is nowhere near them, but she is kind of nasty and it, it is kind of like, you know, sometimes it is kind of very unsettling and weird. But as I say, that's just her character archetype or character trope so like even her even she if you think of it in that way she's not as bad and uh, no character in this show i've seen is like you know has a bad personality or bad character everyone's deep down inside they're good they're eccentric however but they're not bad that's what i'm trying to say so all right, Nasu, Naruse is here, just sitting, and he's like, ah, I'm the protagonist, finally it's my turn. And this, uh, this guy, what's his name? Just a sec. Okay, here it is. Kometani Yushaku. Okay, um. Kometani-kun wa chushaku wo sukemashita. I think something like that they said. That means, Chushaku means commentary, I, I guess. That's what it means in Japanese. Doesn't it? I think so. And Kometani, like Kometani kind of, it kind of seems like commentary or something. So, I don't, you know what, let me check Kometani. Let me check the meaning of his name. Um, it is something like that, like commentary or something. There you go. Uh, where is it? Uh, Chushaku is a homonym for the word comment or to comment. There you go. So that's 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 his the meaning of his name. And obviously, Naruse's name is very easy to understand. Naruse Shisto means narcissist. <laughs> so yeah. So we make two ca characters here, Kometani and uh, Naruse Shisto. So Kometani is the person who kind of gives. Like, you know, like a commentary, outer commentary, and tries to make us, the viewers, understand what's happening and uh, what Naruse is thinking about. So he, he's like a personal 
interpreter you could say of naruse <laughs> so here we can see like uh, kometani just giving more commentary and more depth to naruse's character like naruse is like oh like you know uh, justice beaver still rocks and kometani is like ah he he just wants to show off that he he's listening to western music that's just what he's trying to do and like this you know he, he's kind of like you know commenting on what he's doing <laughs> blowing his bangs just because he wants to be cool you know and uh, <laughs> like that was that was funny like you know he he he's like oh like everyone's looking at me i'm i'm the main character and he just opens his tie and like oh look at me Ugh. No one's looking at him. <laughs> and then he's like, wait a minute. Uh, like, you know, like only Komi is actually worthy enough to talk to me. Why has she not come to talk to me then? And uh, then he kind of actually nails the whole thing. He's like, wait, does she have like social anxiety or something? Communication problem? But then he's like, ah, nah, nah, that's not it. Like, you know, that's not what is happening. And, uh, He's like, all right, like, oh my God, this whole scene. He, <laughs> he's like, she's a flower waiting for bees to gather. That's how it is. It can't be helped. But my bee is enormous. Oh my God, what the? And Kometani, thank you for letting us know that there was no innuendo. <laughs> no innuendo intended, you know? This sentence wasn't intended to sound dirty. Okay, thank you. <laughs> that did sound a, a little bit weird. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like what? Like my B is bigger? What? what? <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> now she tries to go in front of Komi and he just gets, you know, just pummeled by different people. Like all the different people are just, just like, you know, getting in his way. And he's, he's like, what the hell is happening? And <laughs> Like, it's funny to see that these characters were actually not letting him go towards Komi. And that, like, you know, like, I, I think that's what they do. Like, you know, whoever, whichever people who are not friends with Komi, they just try to block them out or something. Just like this. Like, they're, like, Komi's personal bodyguards. And, uh, you know, like, they don't let him go near, uh, uh, what's his name? Naruse. So... And now it's just like, wait a minute, am I that popular? Is, it, is this because I'm, I, I'm so like, you know, popular, that's why. These are all my fans. And he's like, okay, that's understandable. And Komi just leaves within that time. <laughs> so, now it tries to like, you know, um, approach Komi most of the times. And first of all, Yamai comes and just gives him a, Turn warning of yeah don't go near komi and uh nakanaka was doing her usual chuni stuff just using piano strings like what <laughs> uh. and then like all the other characters was just like you know blocking him like makeru comes in and is like oh you have to defeat me first and by the end like you know he's just tired <clears throat> And he's like, oh, but my fans' jealousy is too strong. I'm too popular. So <laughs> he then he decides to like you know leave by going to the restroom and looking at his own reflection. Like <laughs> uh, that's okay. That's that's kind of interesting. <laughs> and Komi sees that he dropped his handkerchief. So Komi grabs the handkerchief goes towards uh, Naruse and gives him the handkerchief and Naruse is like oh <laughs> he, she likes me <laughs> oh my god you, you know what the funny thing here is uh, I feel like this is like one of those oh my god like people are like there are certain people like this who just like you know whenever like someone does something for them you know a little thing like you know, from someone of the opposite gender or something like someone that that person likes if they do something for them they're like ah oh, he or she must like me and uh, that that really shows us how awkward this guy is even though he's this self-proclaimed main character and like a narcissist and it's just that he's he's awkward 
so he goes to Komi the next day and he's like just kind of posing he's like here you go puts his phone up Komi was really like you know unconfused she's like what she kind of touches the phone then she realizes she doesn't know what to do so she gets embarrassed and leaves <laughs> and Naruse is like oh this is weird and he is like okay Tadano like, you know you, you you can give give me your phone phone number <laughs> and Tadano and he exchanges contact uh Yusaku, I think that was his name yeah Kometani Kometani yeah he he kind of says to Tadano that like, don't worry he's like this like will he be his friend he's just awkward that's just it deep down inside he's a good person <laughs> Tadano's like, all right, it, it's okay, and they they got Tadano against a new friend, and my God, each and every day Tadano gets a new picture from Naruse. <laughs> oh my God, that was nice. That was a good introduction. And as I said, I'm glad that Naruse is not the type of person that I thought he would be. He doesn't like you know he is not a narcissist, but that doesn't mean he looks down on others, which is really nice. I'm glad. I'm glad he is a likable person. Like usually, like, you know, like I said this before. I think in multiple animes and everything, like this is like one type of characters who I really hate is people who think so high of themselves but doesn't have the skill or ability to back it up. And one of the biggest examples of that type of person person are narcissists. Like you know, like so many narcissists in anime that I just hate. One of the biggest example is. Um, Shinji from the Fate franchise, and uh, I just hate them. You know, like it's like uh, they, they infuriate me. And uh, I was kind of concerned with how this guy will be, but he's a really nice guy. You know, like like even though he is a kind of a narcissist, you could say that's just you know like just like a funny thing here. You know, he, he doesn't have any malice in his heart. He like you know, he's downright awkward, and at the same time he. Like, you know he he's respectful towards others so all these like you know together yeah he's he's a good person so i'm glad all right the next part is the school trip like you know where everyone's getting deciding to like you know they're kind of making groups and uh they're going to kyoto this time so well, they're like kind of deciding Najimi was talking to Tadano. Tadano was like, oh, we're going to go to the different temples, different places, this and that. And Najimi is like, it doesn't matter where we go. The friends we go are the things that matters, which I 100% agree with. You can go to your neighborhood park, but if it's with your friends, it will be a very nice experience. And uh, you can go to like, you know, the other side of the world. But if you're all alone, I guess people, there are people who kind of enjoy their alone time as well, which is completely fine. But I feel like, you know, going with your friends is a very nice thing. And even if you go to your neighborhood park or neighborhood, I don't know, river to fish with your friends, that in itself is in no way inferior to going to different places. And, you know, like all, everything that matters is the people you go there with and the way you spend your time so i'm i 100 percent agree with najimi here and um, <clears throat> komi was not paying attention she was kind of like you know like zoned out so tadano kind of noticed that and uh, we know how tadano is very attentive to stuff so komi kind of goes to the restroom and everything and tadano doesn't bring that thing up because I think like you know he, he probably realized that this is something difficult to talk about. So when they're going back, Najimi goes like you know to what can I say? Her own thing. Like you know she has been booked or whatever. Like, you know her <laughs> appointments with her thousands and thousands of friends. So yeah. Now since Tadano and Komi is alone, Tadano brings up that whole topic. Tadano is like. Is something the matter? Uh, is something bothering me? At first, Komi was like, "No, it's fine." And Tadam was like, "It's okay. You can tell me. You know, if you if you want to, like, you know, I, I can listen. Like, if, even if I'm not able to, you know, solve your problem, letting it out and letting someone else in in your problem is one way to actually, you know, like, kind of 
one way to hmm. deal with these type of things. So you can tell me. So Komi at the beginning, Komi was like, no. And then later on, not later on, but after that, when they were all going on their own way, Komi calls him. And I'm glad that she talked about it, not wrote about it, because through your own voice, it's better. And I feel like this is the probably the first episode where we get like a big chunk of section where Komi talks continuously, <laughs> which is really nice. <laughs> so it's been a while we've heard her voice. So Komi is like, I have something to say. I've never been to Kyoto. And I was like, wait, so why did she say that she went to Kyoto? Like. And then she starts elaborating. She's like, when I was in junior high, I was all alone in the school trip and no one was there when they were talking about like, you know, making groups. And in the end, everyone played rock, paper, scissors and the, the, just a sec, the losing group would get me. Now, and when you, you know what I was, when I was reacting to this, I was like, wait a minute, maybe this is like the same situation, what, which happen is happening now. Like, for example, now, even now, Komi thinks that people like, you know, like because of her awkwardness, she doesn't have any friends, but in reality, everyone worships her. So I was like, you know, I remember like, you know, in one of the previous episodes, I also said something like, oh, maybe in her, like, you know, when I got to know her story, I said something like maybe even in her previous class she was not aware of the fact that people secretly worshipped her and she just thought that people did not like her or people avoided her and uh, I, I said something like this you know like because the way everything is happening here Omi has such a huge misunderstanding but deep like you know like, like from the other perspective we see that everyone just worships Komi and everyone just wants to be with her so I thought maybe something like that similar thing happened in her previous school or like you know in her previous classes as well and she just did not realize that but you know what I even while reacting I was thinking of it like that I was just you know when I was reacting I was saying something like oh maybe they were doing the rock paper scissor so that like you know whichever group will win will get to have Kobe like that was the contest not the other way around but one thing I should keep an eye on here is where Komi says that the losing group would get me. Now this one line, I feel like this changes everything. I was like, you know, I was saying something like, oh, maybe the group that will win will get her. But she says that the losing group would get her, which changes a lot of things. Like this is actually, yeah, this, this shows this, maybe this means that Komi was correct, like people really did not want to interact with her. But that's extremely weird, I would say, because like, like in this school, everyone worships her. So I'm really, I don't know, I, I just can't believe it, how the opposite could happen in a different school or like in a different place. Like, how? How is it possible? Like, I could understand if a few people did not like her or something like that happened. But the whole class avoided her and did not include her in their activities. While in this school, everyone just worships her. Like, this is like a huge contrast. I don't understand how this is. There's like such a huge contrast. Like... This is kind of weird in my opinion, like how is this even possible? That's why, you know, like that's why even in previously I thought that maybe everyone liked her even in her previous school and she just misunderstood it. But from this episode, I feel like she's correct. Like, you know, she, she really was avoided by the people. Now, I'm not 100% sure because here, like, you know, Komi says that uh, like I was afraid to look at my friends' faces because I thought they would be disappointed to get me. In their group so I didn't even look in their faces so this part is also kind of a confusing one because maybe I don't know maybe I, I thought maybe like you know they were maybe big, very happy to get her and since Komi didn't even look at their faces because of her own you know fear <clears throat> he she didn't realize that her friends were actually happy to get her in their group so and she's just assuming that they did not like her and anything like that but that one line is still kind of like, you know, it's a big red flag in my opinion, where she says like, whichever group will lose will get me as a teammate. Like, 
this this line kind of changes everything now now i'm kind of looking at it in a different way now i'm thinking maybe komi was correct maybe in her previous school people really did not want her in their group but again that's very weird because then how is this contrast here like you know like one class one one school didn't, class didn't like her while this this school this place just worships her how can there be such a huge contrast this is again something that's making me confused i don't know like i really hope we get to see more of i'm sure we will get to see more of this and maybe we'll get a better clarification in the future maybe i'm sure maybe in the future we will meet some people who were from her previous school and maybe from them we could get a more elaborate um explanation as to whether they avoided her in the school previous school or whether they were just like in this school maybe they also worshipped her and komi just misunderstood the whole thing hopefully we'll get something in that in the future like this is a big manga so i'm guessing maybe in the future a time will come when we will going to we are going to meet people from her previous school and then we'll get a proper explanation of what happened there so and obviously like you know like the way komi saw this komi thought that oh they lost that's why we, they were stuck with me me as a burden and uh, like if that is really what happened there if what komi said there like no one picked me and i became the subject of a game where they played rock paper scissors and whichever team lost will get me if that really happened that's messed up you know like i don't know why the teacher even allowed that if that is actually what happened like what type of a teacher are you you're like what but i guess maybe maybe the teacher didn't even know that this was happening like because most of the time that the students themselves like take decisions especially in these type of situation where they make groups and stuff you know like i remember in my school as well there were certain students who were also alienated like this where they were like oh you're one of the cool people come join my group you ah not so much you, it's it's fine like i remember in my school as well there was like this hierarchy where like you know there's like the cool group you know like the the popular group the cool group whatever you call it and then there was that middle middle group and then there was these lower group and then there was a few people students were just all alone throughout there yeah i'm i'm pretty sure like in every place this happens and uh, it was not as serious as this however but it's still it was a little bit weird if you think about it in that way and um, thankfully i was in the middle group i didn't have any problem i was not in the cool group like oh, yeah obviously not but i had my fun in my school days as well so i don't have any problem with that but i'm sure the people who were you know all alone they must have hated school like i don't blame them like I've, I've seen a few people say that i hated school like that's probably why you know like friends make school so much better like that's the hard truth and i'm sure there's a lot of people who will say like oh i don't need friends but no friends make school so much better i very much know that and i realize that my school life was amazing because i had friends and i'm pretty sure like everyone could say that their school life was amazing if they had friends to share that time with but but it's really sad that there are people who actually get kind of are like you know spend their time all alone in their school and they don't have proper friends to just hang out with and they must hate their school life yeah and kind of sad anyways ugh. so yeah that mm, that was what happened and komi was like yeah this is what happened so Tadano was like, no problem. Like, you know, this time you have me. And then he was like, oh, me and <laughs> Nachimi. <laughs> so, and when he said that, Komi's whole, like, you know, like the books and everything just dropped on the road. <laughs> but then Komi was like, thank you so much for listening to me. And uh, Tadano also said something like, oh, like, you know, no problem. Like, you know, if, if the same thing happens, if, if it's divided in gender, like, you know, like, you know, like boys will be one group girls will be one group and if the same thing happens then i will also not go to school with you you know we, we maybe we can go somewhere else or something like that he said and uh, like 
I feel like even if this was like you know divided by gender, like you know boys was like one group or girls another group. I'm pretty sure like you know even though Yamai is a very weird person, still Yamai does consider Ta uh, Komi as her friend. So Yamai, Agari, um, Makeru, Nakanaka, um, who else? Onemine, um, what's her name? Otori. Now all these characters, they they would probably hang out with Komi and they'll have a good time. Like it's it's no problem, and I like I don't know when Najing would go, if it was like you know divided by gender. I think Najing would probably just be in both the groups at the same time. If she'd be like, oh, like you know the girls group, oh the boys group, just kind of, and the teachers wouldn't even care. I think that was what was going to happen. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, Komi is like thank you so much, and uh, Komi at, at the end Komi just. Like, you know, switches off the phone and he she actually talks directly to Tadano after that. And uh, she's like, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, the next day, Komi is very nervous. What's going to happen? Teacher comes in and everyone's like, we'll be in Komi's group. And Komi's like, oh my God, I have so many people that wants to be in my group. And then the teacher was like, I knew this was going to happen. So we're going to draw lots. And there you go. So basically the next episode the whole school arc will start i think and uh, yeah we'll see who goes in komi's group now i i would love to see tadano and komi in the same group but i don't know maybe that will happen maybe that will not happen we'll see but i'm um, it's like a 50 50 chance of either komi being in tadano's group or not we'll have to wait for the next one so yeah thanks for watching guys this was my reaction to komi can't communicate season 2 episode number Seven. so yeah if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out so that's it thanks for watching i'll see you guys next week with another episode of comey can't communicate until then goodbye and have a nice day